My name is Carolyn Morrison, and I'm president of the National CACFP Forum and a sponsor of the USDA Child and Adult Care Food Program in Oregon. Thank you for the opportunity to join you this afternoon to discuss the key role the Child and Adult Care Food Program plays in ensuring young children have access to good nutrition and to offer recommendations for reauthorization. Program improvements can also help reduce childhood overweight and obesity, a priority about which our First Lady is so passionate. Every day across the country, millions of low-income families rely on the healthy food their children receive in child care programs because of this USDA program. We all know hunger stifles a child's health, intellect, creativity, capacity to learn and to be at their best. This program resources support good nutrition and prevent childhood obesity by offering healthy food and teaching young children and their caregivers about healthy lifestyles and meal patterns. As a middle-class mom who decided to be a child care provider in the early 80s, I learned firsthand from my exposure to low-income children who were in my care. I will never forget the four-year-old boy who wondered why I cooked and didn't just go out and buy fast food. Johnny's mom was poor and struggled to make ends meet. She loved her kids, but hadn't the resources, knowledge, or energy to feed them well. The only nutritious meals her children received for many years were those that she received in childcare or when they were at school. Given the crucial role early childhood nutrition plays in supporting the good health, cognitive growth and development of a child, and the lack of knowledge and our resources of many working families, expanding access to the program is vital to ensuring that all children in care settings have the opportunity to grow strong and live healthy, productive lives. For many children in childcare like Johnny, the daycare program they attend is their primary source of food. They spend 10 to 12 hours each day in care and receive most, if not all, of their meals while there. Allowing child care facilities the option of serving a third meal service, as was previously allowed, is an opportunity to improve child nutrition through this reauthorization. The program is an essential source of support for family child care providers, centers, and Head Start programs. Program resources include training and technical assistance, on-site visits, and reimbursement for food and meal preparation costs. The program also serves as an important tool in creating and maintaining accessible, affordable, quality child care for working families. Reducing the program area eligibility test from the current 50% to 40% could accomplish, through authorization, improve access to healthy meals for many more young children. Increasing the availability and consumption of fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and lower fat dairy products for young children in child care is essential to improve development and health and to prevent obesity at the one time, early childhood, when it can have the most long-term effect. Updating the program nutri nutrition standards and meal pattern to make them consistent with the most recent dietary guidelines could be accomplished through reauthorization. Improving meal quality will require enhanced meal reimbursements. The network of program sponsors is breaking down. Sponsors are choosing to discontinue offering this service because they cannot afford to continue to operate given the paperwork and oversight responsibilities. Nationally, 27% of sponsors have chosen to leave the program. This is an especially serious problem in Los Angeles where a sponsor chose to close, leaving 5,000 children and over 700 providers unserved in a very low-income community. A large challenge in my state of Oregon is the size and the geography of our state. While 67% of all caregivers are concentrated in six of our 36 counties, providers in the very rural areas deserve to participate as well. Sponsor administrative reimbursement rates should be brought up to the level necessary to provide quality nutrition and wellness education, cover the cost of transportation for serving rural areas, cover the cost of additional visits, and the time spent in helping low-income providers overcome literacy and language issues. Retention of caregivers is challenging as they must remain eligible for the program by meeting training requirements. We have worked to make this, meet this challenge by developing and offering online training in health and nutrition. This positively impacted our retention of child care providers on the program as they now have access to mandatory training regardless of where they live. Among other topics, these trainings focus on serving more fresh fruits and vegetables, low-fat milk, and whole grains, and have a secondary benefit of helping them meet licensing requirements. Partnerships with local colleges and universities have enabled us to develop these resources as there simply isn't enough money from sponsor reimbursements to develop them. In closing, we strongly support legislation introduced by Representative Tonko, the Access to Nutritious Meals for Young Children Act, which includes the recommendations I have discussed today. 
And lastly, I would like to invite each of you, when you're in a home in your districts, to visit child care homes and sponsoring organizations to see firsthand the importance and opportunities available through the program for playing a role in improving children's health, their lives, and reversing the childhood obesity epidemic. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share this information with you on behalf of all the sponsors.